Right, I'm just going to wait just a couple of seconds for people to start logging in and checking in. Thank you for coming today. All right, let's get this show on the road. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, tech art enthusiasts. It is Friday. It is noon. And that means that it's time for another episode of Tech Art Talk Live. My name is Chris, and I will be your host for today. And today, this is going to be the last session of 2020. And we are going to go talk about something that is a little off canny. And I usually don't lecture about very, very specific topics. But here is a tool that's really kind of an oddball. It's really kind of out of place. And it's something that nobody ever teaches about. And why don't they ever teach about it? I have no idea why, because it's a very, very important process. It's a very, very important tool. And after this lecture, I have a hunch you'll understand why. So this is more akin to something like my Houdini lecture, but this is all about regular expressions. And if you have no idea what an irregular expression is, that is okay. Most people don't. But I'm telling you, this is something you're really going to want to capitalize, and this will really help improve your bestiality rating as far as being a tech artist is concerned. So without further ado, let's get things started with... Regular expressions. Yeah. All right. Regular expressions. Okay. Very good. You know, probably a lot of your folks are asking, what in Goonie Goo Goo are regular expressions? Yeah, you know, I've never heard about them before. You know, what, what what's going on here? Okay. In a nutshell, regular expressions are formalized texture pattern recognitions. Okay, great. What does that mean? Formalized texture and pattern recognitions. Okay, this is a way that you can use to parse through text strings and searches and matches. And so you can use things to go there. And you're probably going, oh, yeah, well, that's all good and fine. I can use search and replace on whatever thing. Ah, yes, you can. But you can't use it to the power of regular 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 expressions. Regular expressions are like search and replace on steroids. And this is really what's going to increase your tech art bestiality rating. Okay, all text editors, big text editors, I mean like sophisticated, not just WordPad. WordPad's kind of primitive. Okay, big text editors have these things called regular expressions inside of them. And that includes, you know, Word, Excel. They all support uh, regular expressions. Sublime supports regular expressions. VI supports regular expressions. Okay, you may folks will be going, well, VI, what is VI? Okay, well, VI is kind of like the back engine of Sublime, and it's what uh, all super advanced tech artists use, and only the most elite and the most uh, sophisticated of tech artists are using VI. You know, these are the folks that live in the command line. And some of these folks might even use Emacs. Now, Emacs is really, really old school, really 1985. But a lot of folks still use it out there. And all text editors such as these use, use regular expressions. So maybe you should too. OK, they're incorporated everywhere. You know, Other than text editors, where are they found? Well, they can be found okay, in Python. Anything you in, do in Python, you can have regular expressions. OK. Which means is that you're able to use them in Blender. Okay, for all you folks Blender out there, I think I'm gonna have to go start, you know, teaching more about Blender because there are people like Blender. Um, all right, anything to do with the DCC or has Python within it, you can use it. Okay, anything with C++, you can use regular expressions. Okay, packages that have plain outright incorporation of regular expressions right inside of it. Of course, Houdini is, you know, big, big surprise there, right? Okay, Maya. Okay, Maya supports them. 3D Studio Max supports them. You know, Max Script, you know, that does have, exactly. UE4, actually, has, since it, uh, UE4 supports Python, but they also have their own regular expressions built in to their C++ and their regular, the, and you can actually get a blueprint from their online score, which supports regular expressions directly. 
Okay, JavaScript, you know, that's not really Java, Java, JavaScript. Okay, Ruby, I'm not sure I've, what Ruby is, but I know it's a very popular online language. Okay, Qt, okay, if you're doing any kind of app development and you're using Qt, Qt is like so important. Qt is like everywhere. And it's like Maya, Houdini are all written in uh, Qt. Qt is a really important interface package. Okay, .NET. Okay, anything to do with Visual Studio, you know, or anything with .NET in it, you know, supports uh, regular size. Okay, XML schema supports it. Perl. Okay, Perl is a, an entire language written about uh, regular expressions. Regular expressions are so important, they actually wrote a, a language about it, and it's called Perl. Now, Perl's kind of like out of vogue, in my opinion. Perl's kind of obtuse, and I kind of prefer Python to Perl, but back in the 90s, Perl was the bomb. So it seemed. Okay, why regular expressions? Okay, time is of the essence. Okay, your job as a technical artist is totally dependent on how fast you can get stuff done. Okay, your company future is really dependent on how fast you can get stuff done. Okay, how many times do you need to do it? You can only do it once. Okay, you don't have to do things the long way. You don't have to show off that you're really, really fast. This will show you that you can go at not only fast, but you are now at flash lightning-like speed. You are now like A-Train. Okay, you can use the tools that are already around you. Okay, why are they already around you? I just listed it. all the tools that you're probably using. You're probably using regular expressions and you didn't even realize it. All right, so use the tools that are already there. Okay, let's get this started with some actual regular expression type work. Okay, so let's get things going. I'm going to have to divert my head a little bit to look at my notes here, but please be patient with me. Okay, let me go ahead and pull up my handy-dandy Sublime folder. All right, there's my Sublime screen. Okay, now... I'm going to be programming in Sublime just because it's just really easy to use and it doesn't really support everything. So support your Sublime, folks. Okay, great. All right. Now, in order to use um, Py, uh, in order to use regular expressions within the context of Python, what you do, you have to to import the regular expression library. So it's just import re. All right, that pretty much does it. Not terribly difficult. And then what you have to do is you have to create a regular expression. And this regular expression is anything that can be pre-compiled. So I'm going to call p equals re.compile. So there's my regular expression. And then I'm just going to say simple, something simple, a, b. Now there's my regular expression. It's in quotes there. This is the regular expression. Okay, so what I'm looking for is a substring of a, b. Okay, then I'm going to say um, my string equals, and I don't know why I came up with this, but this just works. I'm going to just say Alabama rocks. All right, there's a string that we might want to parse. Now, this string could be two words long, or this could be the entire works of Leonardo da Vinci, or even Shakespeare. It doesn't really matter. The strings can be absolutely anything. So what we have to do then is search for this. So I'm going to print out my search. So p.search. And what I'm going to search for is my, my string. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save this, and then I'm going to execute it. And there you see it returned a match, and it looks for, it found a, b, and it found it in the third spot, and it goes through the fourth spot. So this is three and then four. So therefore, what this returned, or what this found was, hey, we found a match. All right, so there are a whole bunch of um, different matching patterns that we can look for. And the first one of these is if we do backslash D, which means any decimal digit. All right, any decimal digit that we're looking for, if we go ahead and execute this, we're going to see if found none because there aren't any decimal digits. But if we put in some maybe like numbers in here, like 68, 
we're going to see that it found the word, the letter 6 right at that. So slash D can correspond to any possible digital element. Now slash D, capital D, corresponds to any non-digital digit. So if we click go on this, it says, okay, we found it at the first line. Okay, at down there. Okay, it found it at the first position, an A. So that was the first non-digital person. Well, that was kind of obvious, but it is good to know that you can do this. Okay, the next one is this backslash S. And backslash S means any white space character. And so if we go ahead and execute that, then it identified the first white space character at location 7, and it goes through 8. And so there it is, right there. We found that. Now, any non-white space is capital S. Now, capital S corresponds to any non-white space, and we execute that, and we're going to, once again, we're going to bound on a very first character on A right there. Now, when we go into something a little bit more specific, other than just white spaces, we might want to look for any alphanumeric characters, and that is backslash W. And backslash W, when you execute that, it first not the first alphanumeric character. Now, an alphanumeric character corresponds to A through Z, capital A through Z, 0 through 9, or underscore. Those are considered alphanumeric characters. And so the first one found is A. Now, the first one non-alphanumeric character can be like this, capital W, and we notice that it found the first space. But does this constitute as white spaces only? Not necessarily. If we wanted to uh, include uh, Alabama, bang. Alabama, bang. Okay, there we go. We thought, okay, that's a non-white space character. Now if we encounter that, okay. Okay, it found the first place, was, which was the bang, right after Alabama. So a non-white, uh, or a non-alphanumeric character could be anything white space, and it can include things like bangs and percent signs and stars and carrots and ampersands and parentheses. You name it, it could be found into there. Okay, now the thing, next we've got to worry about are classes. Classes are objects that are... Um, well, if we want to identify a class, a class is identified by open and square, open and close square brackets. Now, suppose we want to look for the letter, the character N, the character O, or the character P. Somewhere in there, we want to look for that. All right, if we go ahead and look for that, okay, it found character O in the 13th place there. So that is very cool. So it identified N or P, N O or O or P in that. And it's defined by that class, and the class is defined by these little square brackets. Now, suppose that uh, you have something really, really big and you want uh, you don't want to cover the whole the process, you can put dash. Dash will carry thing. All characters between N and P, it will incorporate. Okay, so we get the same result. All right. Now, the next thing we ought to worry about are literal characters. Now, literal characters are designated by what is known as the backslash. Now, I'm going to go into a... So, if we're going to look for, like... Okay, we realize that the star might give us some problems. You say, hey, this is kind of difficult. The star might actually give us... A, the, the text editor might give me some problems. Okay, which look, which look for... Look for that, we're looking for exactly the star, and we want to do it a backslash, which means it escapes. So if we look for bang, or it don't snow. It don't snow. All right, and I'm going to close this off, and I'm going to put the double click. Oh, okay, I'm going to use bad English here. Okay, I'm going to put little stars here. Okay, it's going to identify the first instance of my star. Okay, there it is. It found it at position 26. Now, things get a little bit difficult when we start dealing with uh, 
uh, paths and strings. So suppose we had a path or we had a string that looks like this. Now you'll see that it has the backslash in front of it, so that means it's escaping. But do, suppose we don't want to escape on this, but suppose we wanted to just grab on the actual escape or the backslash character itself. In that situation, what we would need is, this is a little bit nutty, but we're going to need four backslashes. And when we have four backslashes on there, then we deal with the situation completely. Okay, and on the seventh location, it found the first backslash character. And it notice it as backslash, backslash. Why is it backslash, backslash? Because the character is being escaped inside of the string here. Now, I realize that might be a little bit challenging for folks to, to understand, but pl you know, play around with it, figure out how it works, and because you, you can totally ignore this kind of like backslash plague by putting a little R in here. Now, this is a Python implementation, but that means raw. And if we wanted to just look for the just a plain old um, the plain old backslash, then we would recognize that as the plain old backslash. And then here we run it again, and the R allowed me to use less backslashes, which is really, really cool. All right, the next one is repetition. Now, repetitions are really important. Now, the first repetition is the star. Now, the star is really, really important. So I'm going to enter a new string in here, 6060. 842. Okay, for you B52 fans, you know what I'm talking about. All right, so what we're looking for, a star means matching the string zero or more times. So if I put this in here and I put six, zero, six or zero, and then I put this star in here, and then I execute that, Okay, it found six or zero, and it found four repetitions of that particular sequence as six or zero, and it boom, one, two, three, four, and it found it the zeroth through fourth place. Okay, that's really good. So warning, it will match the first non-zero. So here, if we just put that, if we put that on here, and we execute this, it's going to say, hey, wait a second, it found a match right at the very beginning. Why did it do that? Well, it didn't find a 6 in there, and it didn't find a 0. So that's a 0 number of matches. So that means is this is the first instance of it. So, so it just didn't find anything. That is, the very first, that is the very first match that it found. So it signaled that right at the beginning. Okay, so that's something to be aware of. Now, if you want it to be a little bit more uh, decisive, use a plus. A plus designates at least one match or more. Okay, if we're worried about one match or more, let's change this expression around to be, to be a uh, alphanumeric character here or any non-white space character. And then we're going to say 1 or plus. And then when we execute that, OK, once again, it identified a uh, alphanumeric character. And so it identified 0 through 4. And it encountered this as, the, OK, that went ahead and terminated. But it did find 1, so it didn't stop. So you star for 0 or more repetitions, or use plus for at least one repetition. Okay, now uh, there are a couple of operations that you're going to be doing with uh, the regular expressions. And the first of these that we know is search. Now, a search searches the entire string and finds the first location or the first instance of that string or that uh, regular expression anywhere within the string. And we've used that. OK, but what else is there? OK, match, okay, match on the other hand, starts at the very, very beginning of the string. OK, and if we were going to look at, uh, we're going to go back into the string here. And I'm going to change this. All right, and then I'm going to get a much more sophisticated much more sophisticated expression 
put in here. Oops, didn't want that. Okay, so what this means is it's going to have a, a slash w, and the slash w again that corresponds to a uh, any alphanumeric character. You're going to have at least one alphanumeric character, and then it's going to terminate with one backslash. So you're going to have multiple numbers of alphanumeric characters. And so what's going to happen here? Okay, and it found the first match, and this, and it started from the very beginning. If it didn't find it, it's going to give you a none. And so in that case, it found the word objects backslash. All right, now the next one is find all. Now, find all is convenient because um, if we're going to have that, we're going to say print find all. Whoops, final. <laughs> find all. Okay, then it's going to find all the occasions of where this situation is true, not just the first. Okay, it found, it returns in this situation is a tuple of objects, and it first, first found the words objects, and the other object that it found is characters. So it returns all of the instances that it particularly finds. Now, once again, we are using this in the context of Python, but this will apply to any situation of where regular expressions apply. This works for everything. Okay, and another one we do is, is really kind of cool is find iter. Okay, I'm going to change this around a little bit. I'm going to say for slash in p dot iter. Oops, that's a dot. And then I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with my string. And then I'm going to make this a little loop. I'm going to go print slash. OK, so this is kind of like the find all, but we're going to iterate through the list. Now, this is a Python implementation and not necessarily so much of a uh, of other things. But I wanted to know, I wanted to show you folks how this all worked with various Python. Oops. OK, we have a, uh, we have a, uh, a syntax error here for slash into this, and this is the, okay, in module thing. Okay, that means we probably have a, a syntax error someplace. Okay, what does it say? Oh my. Oh my. It has no, object. okay, iter, p dot iter. Okay, it's not iter, it's find iter. Okay, my mistake. I should have used find iter. Okay. Here we go. Now let's try this one again. There you go. It just went through and iterated through all those expressions. All right. What are some of the other objects that, uh, what are some of the other return things going to do? Well, it can return a group. Okay. If we just do a... Uh, If we do a student group, so if we go uh, slash equals p dot search, and we go looking for my string, okay. So what do we do with the group? Okay, the group shows you what uh, is actually been found. So whatever has been found, whatever that gets put inside of the group. So if I say print slash dot group, then it's going to show you what each of the groups that it found are. Or it's going to show you the first thing that it found, actually. Okay, there it is. It found objects. Now, if we put in start, that'll give the start location of where the group was found. So it's found at point position zero. Likewise, if we do end, it'll give you the end position which is goes all the way to 8. And if we ask for the span, it will be the, spart, the start and the end. All right. That can be very, very helpful. Now, there are some other tools. There are some other symbols that uh, you need to be familiar with. And the first of these is the OR 
which is designated by the vertical bar. And I'm going to change this around again. OK, we've got looking for either Marky or Tommy. And then let's say that my string is some good old familiar faces. OK. And now all I'm going to do is print slash. OK, so what this is going to do is going to search for either Marky or Tommy of where it depends on where it finds here. And so it's going to search this string and identify either Marky or Tommy. And if we execute this string, it says that it did find Tommy. Now, if we just left this on here and we're looking for Marky, if we go ahead and execute that, we see that it failed. All right. So looking for that is very good. Now, if we want to do at the beginning of a string, then we would do something like, OK, caret J-O. OK, that could return Joey or it could re jo return Johnny. Which is going to return? Well, it's going to return the first instance. Why? Because it's anchored with the caret, which acts as the anchor for the start of the line. So we look at that. Then it finds the first instance of that. Now. However, if you wanted to find the end of the string, you use the dollar sign. So in this case, I'm going to put in D, and then the dollar sign anchors at the end of the string. And so it could find the first location or it could find the second location. According to this, it should find the first location, which is, is on there, but It's instead, what it's going to do is find the very end. Oops, that's not what I wanted. OK, so it found it all the way at the end of the string right there at the end. So the dollar sign anchored it to the very end. OK, now, if we suppose we wanted to look for something like, OK, we want to get this we want to group things, and we will want to look for individual elements of which we can use and which we can capitalize and then reuse at a later again. We can use more sophisticated grouping. OK, suppose we have this string then. OK, the Ramones are Joey, Johnny, Tommy, and Dee Dee. And we're going to look for a very, very sophisticated regular expression here. OK, now this looks a little bit nutty, but this is kind of like where the power of regular expressions lies. Note that we have four sets of parentheses. One set of parentheses, two, three, and then the fourth one. Now, the first set of parentheses is a alphanumeric character. Or actually, we have at least one, and then it's followed by a comma. And then there's going to be a white space in between followed by another situation, a white space, another situation, and finally, it's going to be a white space, and it's going to follow by a white space character. It's going to be founded by, it's going to, be, it's going to get a number of alphanumeric characters. It's going to take the white space character, followed by more alphanumeric characters, and so where is it going to find? So if we go look through this, and what we're going to do is look through print slash dot group. If we put just put group there, it's going to re reflect all that it finds. OK, so it found the entire sequence right through here. OK, so that's group 0. But what if we wanted to just find the very first element within that? OK, notice that we change that group from the index of 0, which are going to change it to 1. So we look for, OK, it just found Joey. Now, if we wanted to find the second one, that's number 2, Johnny. And then on and on, you, it's what has happened. So if we want to go all the way to the fourth, and we're going to find Dee Dee. OK, very good. <laughs> All right, now suppose, now that's a great way of parsing through this information, and then with that parsed information, go ahead and identify the individual elements that were found. Now this is super strong, folks.
All right, now split is another situation of where we want to use uh, it's equivalent to the Python split command, but what you can do is use regular expressions to do the split for you. And so if we're going to keep this r nice and simple, let's look for a split on, uh, let's look for uh, backslash capital W. Okay, I'm going to put an R here just in case. And then Let's talk this, let's say, like something like this is a test for split. I don't want to split it, I want to split it. Okay, and then I'm going to just print out my find. So what this is going, oh, and what I'm going to do is instead of search, I'm going to go with split. So everywhere where it finds a white, a, a uh, a non-white space character, it's going to put a little gap in there. So what are we going to find here? Split. Okay. And then, okay, it found a white space character here, 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 and there. Okay. All right. So it's going to split on where it didn't find it. Okay. Very cool. Now, when you take advantage of this, then you can use the search and replace. And the search and replace is really, really awesome. So if we wanted to look for something like, um, oh, let's go for a string here. I'm going to change this over to this. If we're looking for red, white, or blue, and if we have a string that's kind of like this, if we say something like, oh, we're looking for red and blue, red fish and blue underwear. Okay, now if we wanted to, what we could do is substitute everywhere where we find our match, we can replace it with a new string. So if we go P sub, now sub is the place where you're gonna substitute your new string, and in this case, we're gonna put just simply colorful, and then this is where our search string is going to be, my string. Okay, print slash. Now, as you can see, oops, that's not what I wanted. Okay, now you'll see that what it did was it took red fish and blue underwear, and then it, where it found red or white or blue, it replaced with the word colorful. So now we have colorful fish and then colorful underwear. Okay, now that is the substitution command. All right, now that is pretty much what I wanted to cover with you folks today. And so, therefore, that pretty much wraps up what uh, I wanted to cover. And so let's get things moving along the road. Okay, and let me finish things up here. All right. Let me go ahead and zoom off to the end here. All right, great. All right, well, thank you very much for joining me today. Oh, let me go ahead and keep this, keep this going. Okay, thank you very much for joining me today. Now, there won't be a TechArt EDU session next week or the following week just because the next TechArt talk session will be on Christmas Day. And the following will be on New Year's Eve, where you'll all be nursing hangovers. So we're not going to be having this. But join me again on, this will probably be um, the 8th of January, or the following Friday, for the next episode of Tech Art Talk Live. I don't know what the episode is going to be. Go ahead and S message me and tell me what you want to see, and I might just comply. So if you like what you saw today, please go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Now go ahead and check me out on techartedu.com. Now this is a location of where you can contact and see all that is new and available on techartedu. And for Tech Art Talk Live, my name is Chris. Go ahead and check me out on Facebook and LinkedIn. And check me out on techartedu where Check Our EDU can be found on Facebook and on LinkedIn as well. All right, that's pretty much all we're going to cover for today. Thank you very much. Have a very pleasant Christmas and have a rockin' New Year's, and I'll see you all in 2021. I'll check you out later. Bye.